Port control operates on the basic mammalian physiology that we share with all other mammals. Uh, and that is special body surfaces that are adapted to dissipate heat. And those are the non-hairy skin surfaces. Most mammals have fur. So if you have fur, you can't lose heat very easily over your general body surface. So mammals have evolved special blood vessels in the non-hairy skin that can take large volumes of blood and therefore heat to those surfaces where it's dissipated to the environment. In most mammals, these are the pads of the feet. In us, it's the palms of the hands and the soles of our feet. So by cooling the blood, which is circulating under these limited skin areas, large volumes of cooler blood goes back to the core of the body. As a result, core control cools from the inside out. And that is much more efficient than trying to exchange heat over the overall body surface, which is really an insulator. These unique vessels allow a huge volume of blood to flow right beneath the skin surface. Um, blood carries heat around the body, and so when your system needs to get rid of heat, it sends it to the exposed body surfaces through the circulating blood. So these are our unique radiator structures that are found in every mammal. The core control unit simply taps into this unique physiological adaptation. The reason the core control is so effective in manipulating body temperature is it taps into the radiator structures. The rest of your body surface is not designed for heat transfer. It's got hair. Hair is insulation. It's very thin insulation, but nonetheless it's insulation. The insulation protects you from external thermal challenges, but it also limits your ability to get rid of internally produced heat. And so by using these radiator structures, we can effectively transfer heat out of the body. When you're active, heat is being produced by your large dynamic muscles. How does that heat get out of the muscle? That heat comes out of the muscle in the blood and that blood flows back to the heart. Therefore, the heat that's being generated in your large dynamic muscles goes into the core of your body before it goes out to the periphery to be dissipated to the environment. So the reason core control is efficient is that it sends cool blood directly into the core and that cooler blood then is distributed back out to the exercising muscles in proportion to their metabolic demand. So what essentially core control does is provide an internal cooling source for the muscles that are engaged in the exercise. We have worked in the lab and in the field with core control devices being used in different types of activities and sports. And you can divide these into aerobic activities such as long distance running and anaerobic activities such as weightlifting, uh, strength conditioning. In both of these cases, the body is producing heat. In the case of endurance sports, this heat accumulates in the body, so overall temperature rises and core control is able to subtract from that accumulated heat and therefore delay the rise in temperature that results from endurance activity. As a result, the activity can be sustained for a longer period of time. In the case of anaerobic activities, such as strength conditioning, for example, bench press, pull-ups, push-ups, that sort of thing, uh, the heat is being produced locally by the muscle groups that are being active and very rapidly that accumulated heat shuts down the activity of those muscles. We call it muscle fatigue. So core control by sending cooler blood back to the heart and the heart sends that cooler blood out to the muscles that are working, it's possible to decrease the amount of heat which accumulates in those muscles and therefore they work longer. In endurance exercise, in anaerobic exercise, where you can go for long distances and the heat is being generated by your active muscles and removed from the active muscles by the circulating blood, your core temperature starts to rise. 
um, by increasing the rate at which you can pull heat out of the circulating blood, you can delay or attenuate the rate of core temperature rise and forestall the performance halting mechanism, be it fatigue or cramping or whatever. Um, for high intensity anaerobic exercise, the muscle, muscles are generating a trend, tremendous amount of force in a very brief period of time, but during the contractions, you've essentially shut off the blood flow to the muscles, so you get a local buildup of heat in the active muscle cells. As soon as that releases, blood flow rushes back through the tissue, and the temperature of the blood determines the recovery rate and the temperature profile of the muscle cells for the next contraction. If heat's the limiting factor, the more you can pull the muscle temperature away from that stop point, the more work you can get out of the muscle. We have had people exercising in a hot room, 40 degrees centigrade, that's pretty warm, uh, on a treadmill, walking uphill, and typically we can double their endurance uh, under those sorts of conditions. In the case of anaerobic activities, such as strength conditioning activities, we can, in some cases, double the work capacity of an individual when they are not using core control versus when they're using core control. Now, by extending the workouts to that extent, you get a rapid conditioning effect and we can see the capacity of the individual to sustain higher workloads increase progressively over a period of only five, six weeks. Just about everything imaginable will affect, will affect the core control effect. Uh, for endurance where people are exercising in a very, very hot environment, like in a treadmill in one of our hot rooms, um, at a fixed load exercise, simply by sticking this device on someone that we just take in off the streets, we can see a 50% increase in their performance capacity. In elite athletes, in endurance trained athletes, we can see a doubling of their performance. Um, now there's another group of athletes that will come in and we'll cool them off and we'll see absolutely no effect on performance, but they won't sweat as much. They won't feel as tired. So it depends upon what you're looking for. Um, when we're doing strength conditioning, you can see a 30, 40, 50% increase in the work volume in a given workout. You know, in some people, it, maybe it'll double. It depends upon the individual. Um, but that's just in the one-offs. Typically, we see a 30 to 40% increase. Um, if you take this increase in a daily workout and sum it over a training regime of six weeks or seven weeks, you see tremendous increases in the training responses. Core control will benefit an individual in a situation in which heat is the limiting factor. Thus, if you're engaged in a very low level of activity in Alaska in the winter, core control is not going to do you much good, unless you use it in the heating mode, of course. But if you're engaged in an intense activity that causes your body temperature to rise, causes you to sweat, Extraction of some of that heat from the body is going to extend your endurance and it's going to increase your work capacity. Now, when should you use it? You should use it when heat is accumulating. So using core control before you've sustained a heat load, it's not going to do you much good. But using core control as your body is accumulating a heat load or after it has accumulated a heat load will increase endurance and will speed recovery. This technology's got tremendous potential in all sorts of uh, industrial type of applications, including military applications, where temperature can become a performance limiting factor. Um, 
people in hazmat suits, firefighters, anybody that wears heavy insulative protective gear means they can't effectively dissipate heat. And if they're out working at any sort of a, a reasonable workload, they are going to be affected by the buildup of internal temperatures. With this device, you can forestall the development of fatigue. Uh, in EMT types of applications, many people that go down have heat-related symptoms. This is a means to very effectively, in the field, treat these symptoms. So we've been focusing on the application of core control in physical activity, exercise, sports, and so forth. But there are many situations in which the accumulation of heat in the body, and therefore the rise of body temperature, is threatening and even uh, is, is dangerous and even life-threatening. So for example, emergency workers engaged in very hot environments, such as firefighters. Uh, when they're in the fire and they are dressed in protective gear and working hard, rise in body temperature can be uh, debilitating. Uh, construction workers, field workers, people engaged in uh, physical activity in very hot environments can suffer a rise in body temperature and therefore incur heat illness and even get to the verge of heat stroke. And core control is uh, an, uh, an application for con core control in these situations can uh, avoid the kind of, of debilitating uh, effects of, of high body temperature that are seen in emergency workers.